what's good y'all boy ross back at again with another video so we just finished checking out smackdown shout out to everyone that was part of the smackdown live stream reactions on the inner clutch page we always appreciate y'all showing up uh tonight i held down the fort dub wasn't able to make smackdown tonight but i definitely held down the fort and we had a good time man so i gotta talk about obviously what's going on with the bloodline stuff and i'm gonna talk about what happened with aj styles in this supposed retirement but we kind of knew how that was gonna play out so first things first let's talk about this bloodline stuff so we get a backstage segment um you got tonga loa and tama tonga getting ready for their tag team match against the street profits and paul Heyman is trying to figure out what's going on with solo like he's he's basically saying when roman reigns you know was running things you know we 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 did things with procedures we we didn't just go out there and you have you know cause senseless violence just for the sake of doing it you know we we did things with a purpose that's why i'm here that's why I'm the wise man to come up with a way that makes sense to do what we did or what we were doing. And we need to come up with a game plan because when Roman does come back, we need to find a way to have Cody in check. We need to have, find a way to make sure that Cody's in the, the prime position for when Roman comes back to essentially take the championship back. Right. And Solo wasn't hearing it. Solo's like, we already have cody in check cody just doesn't even know it yet paul's like who is we like who are you talking about who is who is we and that's when kevin owens music hit kevin owens went to the ring guess to uh well he was went out to the ring to essentially uh address the bloodline and that's when uh solo's like you need to handle it or we're gonna handle it. i'm gonna handle it handle kevin owens right now so first and foremost just off that alone the fact that solo has once again said we got cody in check and he doesn't even know it it's all signs are pointing to Sh the rock all signs are pointing to him what he said before he left after wrestlemania saying your story with roman is done but our me and me and your story has just begun the fact that he said you know me and you know I'm going to make you bleed again, potentially. And Cody's like, I'm going to make you bleed as well. Him wanting to hold the championship that Cody just won. This is all The Rock's doing. That's why he said we. Paul Heyman has no idea. He's, he's out the loop here. Paul Heyman doesn't know really what's going on. Only Solo does. Solo is kind of the bridge between who's really running the show, which is clearly which is clearly Cody. Then they haven't done nothing to Cody. They've been just doing their own thing. But like he said, Cody, we have Cody in check and he doesn't even know it yet. It's all leading to the rock coming back. So I love what they're doing here. They're still, you still, you don't know who's really in control, but you kind of have an idea. It's not Roman and it's definitely not Paul. It's most likely the rock. Kevin Owens comes out there and he basically says that, you know, he he's going to always have Randy Orton's back. You know, he wanted to make sure the bloodline wasn't going to try to ruin Randy Orton's chances of winning King of the Ring. And then he also brought up the fact that we all know, really, that Randy should have won that match against Gunther. But that's neither here nor there. And he's like, I'm, I'm not I'm not here with the games with the bloodline. I'm going to keep doing what I got to do. Paul Heyman comes out there and Paul Heyman was in his acting bag today tonight give him an Academy Award he was selling this right now he he killing it he came out there his demeanor is not the same he looks stressed he looks bothered and he's basically out there saying Kevin Owens you need to leave these guys alone and what made this promo so so good especially on Paul Heyman's side, is the, the words he used. He says, Solo, he said, first, Roman respects you. Out of all the stuff that we've been through with you and Roman, he respects you. But Solo doesn't respect you. The people that he has with him, they don't respect you. They don't. 
They are thugs. He called them thugs. He called them criminals. Like, we like to do background checks. That's why we didn't let anybody just be in the bloodline. These guys are thugs, animals, criminals. They don't care. They are looking for a reason to hurt you. And, of course, since we all know Paul Heyman, you can you, you barely can trust him. Kevin Owens didn't trust him. Kevin Owens was uh, essentially like, why should I believe you now, Paul? Out of all the years, why now should I believe you? Like, you've... You're the one person in this industry that I, I I definitely don't believe what you're saying. If anything, you could be behind all of this. This is all a setup. You know, you like to find the next big thing after Roman lost. This could be a situation where for you, Solo is the, ne is the next big thing. And this is all a plan. This is all a ruse. And Paul, he starts getting mad. And he starts to, his eyes start to water and he starts to get really irritated because he's like, why can't I be redeemed? You can be redeemed. Well, why can't I be redeemed? Why is it so hard for me to believe that I don't want you to get hurt? I have met your children. You have met my children. Why, wh I, why can't I be the person to tell you that you don't need to do this because I don't want to see you hurt? And he was just getting very, it's like he was venting. He's like, no one believes me. I am not in control here. I'm not doing things. I mean, my man literally just called all his, uh, the new bloodline members straight criminals. <laughs> criminals, bro. <laughs> like just, just animals, savages. That, bro, the words he was using was very, very descriptive and not in a good way with people that is in his camp. He ain't never called Jimmy and Jay that. So, He's getting frustrated and he ends up the mic. Uh, he ends up hitting Kevin Owens with the mic. And, he, you know, you, you can tell that was accidental. And I love this dynamic of Kevin Owens not believing him because he's Paul Heyman. And you don't want to believe Paul Heyman because he's Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman actually telling the truth and saying, I have nothing to do with this. Please don't do this. Leave them alone. They don't care. And as Kevin Owens is about to potentially attack Paul Heyman, that's when Solo and uh, Tama Tonga and uh, Tonga Loa come out. They ready to fight. Uh, you know, Kevin Owens said, I'm, I'm not blacking, backing down from the bloodline. He had, essentially had an impassioned promo before they even came out. I forgot to mention that. He had an impassioned promo, said, I've been dealing with the bloodline for so long. I've been hit by a golf cart with these guys. I have been super kicked multiple times. It doesn't matter. I'm still here, and I don't give a damn. But these guys, these solo and these other guys, they don't belong here, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure they understand they don't belong here. So after he said that, that's when they came out. And uh, once again, great segment. And uh, the Street Profits ended up coming out as well to assist. And it became an all-out brawl before the Street Profits had their tag team match. Um, this was great. This is fantastic. I love what they're doing here. Paul Heyman acted his ass off. Kevin Owens don't give a shit. He's, he's down to go down with the ship. Kevin Owens is definitely someone's willing to die. To destroy the bloodline. But this bloodline is different. And once again. Pay attention to what Paul Heyman has said. I don't know if you guys have seen the reports of. You know WWE. Being a little bit uh, concerned. Or potentially maybe they would be concerned. With uh, Jacob Fatu's history. And his criminal past. And that could be a concern. The fact that he brought this up. That may play into it. Because we, you know. If you haven't seen Jacob Fatu. He's a he's a definition of a savage in the ring so it'll be very interesting if they play that up like this new bloodline they don't play by the rules they don't care about integrity in that ring all they care about is destruction and that aligns with what the rock would want because if you really think about it the rock is the only person to really try to destroy Cody since he Cody's been back in WWE in a sense of he made him bleed and it's not only that he made him bleed he made him bleed in to prove a point that he's gonna spill his blood in front of his own mother Roman's never done that to Cody 
it was always just business with Roman and Cody. That's all that Roman looked at, Cody. It's just business. But The Rock didn't look at it that way. He took it personal. And he went a savage route. That's one of the best Monday Night Raws leading up to WrestleMania. This nigga beating the dog shit out of Cody Rhodes, busting him open right in front of his bus, only for the cameras to come turn off and still beat the shit out of him. Put the blood on the weight belt just so he can give it to his mom. That's savagery. Roman didn't do that. Roman wasn't on that type of timing. He didn't do that to Cody. This is the difference of this new bloodline. They're savages. And that's the idea they're trying to present, which aligns with The Rock. The Rock wants savages. The Rock wants people that are not going to go and play by the rules because he's not playing by the rules. This is why this is fantastic. I love what they're doing here. We're going to get that bloodline civil war so soon, and it's going to be cinema. <clears throat> I, I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it. We also got to talk about what happened towards the end of the show. Throughout the show, you have AJ Styles in this light blue, sky blue shirt, uh, well, suit. Looks like he's about to quote unquote retire. Definitely gave some Mark Henry vibes because he went to Nick Aldis and said, hey, I got to go to the ring. Got to talk about something. Didn't want to say it right then and there, but we kind of knew he's giving this retirement vibe. If you've seen the Mark, Hen Mark Henry in the Salmon suit, uh, quote unquote retiring you already knew he even goes through the back la la night gives him a handshake you know and then he he says something to cody we don't know what he says to cody but he says something to cody he goes out there uh you see the oc out there his homies you know from the uh, from bullet club or whatnot they go out to the ring together and he's cutting this impassionate promo you get the little waterworks going and he's like man you know, this is, you know, I've loved doing this. I got to see my son graduate. And that's when I knew it was time for me to maybe put things down and 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 really enjoy that new chapter of my life. Like he was he was trying to sell it. He was trying to sell it. Even the announcers are selling it. Corey Gray's talking about his history with them. Like he's selling it. And then he's like, yo, I want Cody Rose to come out here. I asked him in the back to come out here. Cody comes back out there. Uh, you know, and he's sharing a ring with him and he's like, man, I want you to know that, you know, we had a fantastic match at Backlash, which they really did. And we tore the house down, but I just want you to know this is still the house that AJ Styles built, but now this is yours. Now this is your house and Cody selling it. He starts getting emotional and I'm like, oh no. Once Cody gets emotional, it's like he he just loses all reasoning. And you, you could tell Cody was about to get packed up, bro. So at the end, Cody says some nice and you know, encouraging, beautiful words or whatnot. And then, you know, he's raising his hands up to the fans. You know, Cody's raising up AJ Styles' hand, and then all of a sudden he eats a vicious clothesline, and Cody proceeds to get packed. And here's the interesting thing about this. The, his OC homies, as the referees and officials are trying to stop this, they, they're they blocking off referees and officials from getting to help Cody. So it kind of seems like they've, you know, maybe really re realigned themselves with AJ. So at this point, Cody's getting packed up on the outside of the ring. You see Cody, uh, no, AJ picks up the steel steps. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What's about to happen here? Puts Cody in the Styles class positioning on top of the steel steps and hits the Styles class to Cody onto the floor from the steel steps. And that was GG's for Cody. And nobody could stop it. None of the officials could get to him. And I'm like, that's good. We, we had to find a way to get back to this. This was going to be the way to get back to it. If you hadn't seen the Mark Henry stuff, the Mark Henry fake retirement, you probably would have been surprised. We saw this coming. Was it still entertaining? Yes, it was. Am I looking forward to their match? Whatever match is going to be, because I do think this shouldn't be a wrestling, a regular wrestling match. This needs to be for a stipulation, because if I'm Cody, you got suckered in, and he style clashed you onto the floor. You got to pack this nigga up. 
Now you need to be like, you know what? I'm going to make sure your son sees you a lot more because I'm going to beat the shit out of you and send you packing. That's what needs to happen. We need to have some type of stipulation for this match. Do I think AJ's winning? No, because he's not. They're saving. This is one of those things where because The Rock said what he said, they're saving this. Cody's not losing any time soon before The Rock gets his hands on him. So that's the only bad thing about this title run. We know. I wouldn't even say bad, but predictable part. We know The Rock's coming back. He's going to have to get his dibs first before Cody ever drops it. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out, man. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? I definitely did. Fun episode. Looking forward to what things, how things progress in the weeks going forward. I just need to know. Cody need to stand on business. They don't need to. I, we know he's he likes to talk, but if I'm Cody, I I I I go in the back and I hit him with a steel chair. Like, oh, you, you want to fake retire? I'm gonna I'm gonna permanently retire you. Like something, something. But appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150k, and I'm still on speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.